take a few minutes to do, but let me tell you who you're looking for um, as we do this. So first floor, the end toward the science wing and Mrs. Acosta's room, the main office, you will be going to Mrs. O'Neill. She will be stationed facing the second floor in front of the main office windows. If you are in the stream lab or the art room or the band room, uh, you will, or D114, the auditorium area, you'll be looking for Father Jeff. He'll be in the green vestments and he'll be close to the trophy case and the main part of, of, the, of the field house. Second floor, you're looking for, if you're in an odd numbered classroom, you're looking for Mr. Driscoll. He'll be standing close to where his classroom is. If you're an even numbered classroom, you'll be looking for Ms. Chaplow. She'll be at the opposite end of the hallway, not too far from where my office is located. And then finally on the third floor, odd numbered rooms, you're looking for Mrs. Pastrick. That is where you will go to for communion. Even numbered rooms, you're gonna go to the end of the hallway where you see Adriana Alvarez. If you get confused, that's okay. God understands, we'll get it worked out, but I'm sure you will all do fine. With that, if everyone would please take a moment to place themselves in the presence of God, close your eyes, say a quick Happy New Year to yourself and to God. Offer up in prayer someone in your life who is in need of prayer right now. And give thanks to God for something good going on in your world. I invite the church to please rise and join in the opening song as we greet our celebrant, Father Jeff Burton. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul. Lift up my spirit to my Lord, to you I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O oh God, teach me your paths, guide me, you are my Savior. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord, to you I lift up my soul. Good and upright, our gracious God, showing the way, guiding the humble to To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you I lift up my soul. Steadfast and kind your ways, O oh God, all who revere your covenants know your friendship. God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord, to you I lift up my soul, to you I lift up my soul, to you I lift up my soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, we come together this day giving glory and praise to our God. And before we approach the table of our Lord to encounter Christ Jesus' love and mercy through that gift of the Eucharist, we first take a moment of pause. Let us acknowledge our sins and so better prepare ourselves to more fully celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the morning star and the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we listen to the word of our God. reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah rose after a meal at Shiloh and presented herself before the Lord. At the time, Eli the priest was sitting on a chair near the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In her bitterness, she prayed to the Lord, weeping copiously, and she made a vow, promising, O Lord of hosts, if you look with pity on the misery of your handmaid, If you remember me and do not forget me, if you give your handmaid a male child, I will give him to the Lord for as long as he lives. Neither wine nor liquor shall he drink, and no razor shall ever touch his head. As she remained long at prayer before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth, for Hannah was praying silently. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli, thinking her drunk, said to her, How long will you make a drunken show of yourself? Sober up from your wine. It isn't that, my lord, Hannah answered. I'm an unhappy woman. I have had neither wine nor liquor. I was only pouring out my troubles to to my God. Do not think your handmaid as a 'er ne'er-do-well. My prayer has been prompted by my deep sorrow and misery. Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She replied, Think kindly of your maidservant, and left. She went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and no longer appeared downcast. Early the next morning, they worshipped before the Lord, and then returned to their home in Ramah. When Elkanah had relations with his wife Hannah, The Lord remembered her. She conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks 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 be be to God.
source of love what you be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Capernaum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come out to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him with a loud cry, came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Friends, if you asked me on March 1st of 2020 what skills from my previous life as a journalist might come in handy, I'd probably list maybe storytelling, vocal inflection, tongue twisters, like the Irma Lerman Merman murder turned the bird's world lurid, the were and the purr of the twirler girl, she would the world were demure, the sure as allure for valor was pure Kari were, those sorts of things. Now, of those, Probably nonlinear video editing would have been roughly 487th on that list. But there I was on March 14th of 2020 filming masses. Me and an iPad all alone in the 150 seat chapel at St. Paul Catholic Church. We were trying in that moment to keep a community together. And that's why we're doing this right now, too. Because we are a community, we are a family, and we need to be together. And so in this very moment, we share the moment together as a family, as a community, 
as I was filming those masses for a year in front of an iPad, I came to an important realization in life. Nothing is impossible for God if, if we're willing to let him in. Take that first reading that we heard today. Hannah thought she would never have a family. It affected her entire being. It affected her disposition. It affected her attitude. It affected all of those people around her. She was really down. She didn't think that anything could lift her up. But then she let God into the situation. And she waited and waited and waited. But eventually, that which she thought impossible became possible. I think we're okay in letting God into our situations, into our relationships, although be it at a distance. Because I think that sometimes we just think of God as that magic genie. You remember the one from Aladdin? You know, you grab the lamp, you rub the lamp, you make the wish, the wish is granted, you put the lamp back on the shelf. Well, that's not how a relationship with God works. A true relationship requires work. A true relationship is an ongoing process. And we know that God is with us. We know that God is always there for us. But we're not fully ready to open that window of our hearts. And sometimes we try to shut God out from the fullness of a situation. Maybe it's because we're ashamed of something. Maybe it's because we don't want to hear the truth. Maybe it's because we've been burned because God didn't grant us our wish at 12.47 p.m. on April 8th, 2018. Whatever the reason may be, odds are your stubbornness is at least part of that equation. Think about our situation right now. You're sitting in a classroom wearing a mask, listening to a priest lecture you. Not exactly fun times, am I right? Yes. But this moment in your life, this may be your nonlinear video editing 20 years from now. Maybe somewhere in the recesses of your mind, this entire experience is taking root and something, something from this experience will find you at some point. You may not remember this very moment, but something will spring up. Something will pop up in your memory, and you will remember something you learned in this very moment. At some point, things might not be going well. And sometimes you're going to need help. Maybe in that moment, the stubbornness of your will will dissipate. Maybe you'll let God into whatever situation it is that's going on in your life. Maybe you're like that guy in our gospel story today. Maybe God helps you make sense of the situation. Maybe God brings about healing in your life. But only if you're willing to let him in. It can only happen if you are willing to see God in your midst. Friends, it can happen. It can happen if you let God in. Remember, nothing, nothing is impossible for God. Let him in, and you'll see. Trusting that God always hears us, we present our prayers, the prayers of the Bishop Noel family before God's holy altar. Our response to the prayers of the faithful is, Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to injustice, violence, intolerance, and racism in our schools, communities, country, and world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders and military personnel who bravely serve and protect us from harm on a daily basis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all medical personnel, nurses, doctors, those who staff our hospitals and health clinics, that they remain strong through these challenging times, we, re we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all world leaders follow the example of Pope Francis and faithfully guide all people with wisdom, respect, and sincerity of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our Bishop McClory, pastors, teachers, administrators, parents, and all who guide our faith. 
that they may have the wisdom and courage to share the gospel message through their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and lonely may enjoy the comfort of the presence and love of caring family, friends, and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, that they may be filled with the joy of seeing Jesus face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the Bishop Noel family, past and present, and her benefactors, that we may find positive ways to help build a world of greater respect and dignity for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, open the eyes of our hearts that we might see you in our midst, that we might have that courage to allow you into every situation, every relationship we face in this life. Help us to know that you always hear our prayers, those we've spoken aloud this morning and those you alone can hear in the silence of our hearts. We ask them, all of our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. You are worthy through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her together with the fullness of your charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And so 
So, friends, together we stand, and with one heart and one voice, we pray those words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. I invite you to share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you.
heart and you know my ways. You who formed me in my mother's womb. I live and move in you. My whole being thrives in you. Christ in me, I'll rise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, I'll rise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, I'll rise. Christ in me, I'll rise. Christ in me arise, and I shall rise with you. And so let us stand together and pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you today and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Lord, I lift your name on a high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I, Lord, I lift your name on the high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm 
so glad you came to save us. You came from the heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on the high. Lord, I lift your name on the high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Thank you, Mr. Herr. Thank you uh, to everybody. Thank you, Ms. B, for making this happen. Thank you, Father Burton. Um, good afternoon, students. Um, in typical mass fashion, even though we are not present all together, we are all present throughout the building. Um, so I wanted to share my mass moment with you. Um, and I asked a volunteer, and Antoine Lewis happened to be in the hall, and he's still mad at me because he wasn't the turkey um, at the Thanksgiving mass minute. So I called him up, and I asked Antoine to join me. So Antoine, come on down. Um, one of the moments that resonated with me um, during the homily that Father said was um, when he talked about tongue twisters. Um, and I was like, I've never heard the one he said. Never heard it. I'm not even going to try to practice it because it would be a disaster. But then I thought of the ones I did know. And I was like, Peter Piter pecked a pickle pickle peppers. And Peter Piter pecked a pickle pickle peppers. Where's the pack of pickle peppers Peter Piter picked? So I told Antoine, and he looks scared now. I was like, do you know Peter Piper? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, you're up. So Antoine, you're up. Good luck. You say that. I say it like Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle peppers, something like that. I don't know how you say it backwards. Well, you don't say it right. <laughs> I, don't. <laughs> I don't. So Antoine lied. He said he knew it. Um, but one of the interesting things about uh, tongue twisters is when he was saying it, I was like, I never heard that one before. And I was sitting there and I'm like, man, I wouldn't have thought that we would be in this circumstance today. And I really feel like we're navigating a tongue twister. Um, COVID has um, stum made us stumble. We have stuttered. We have faltered. Um, it's very tongue twister of COVID to have us here today. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the story of Hannah and I'm not going to lie. I'm there. Like if you listen to the story of Hannah in the first reading, she's miserable. She's like, eh. Uh, I'm angry, I'm over this, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. And I want you to know, students, that as your leader, I try to be fearless, but man, I'm kind of there. I'm kind of like, I don't want to be miserable anymore. And I share this because, um, you know, you saw the commercial about the resolution, but in my own personal life, I've realized that I've kind of become kind of a grump and that's not really who I am I'm kind of more miserable than I'm usually okay and I share this with you because um and it's funny because my husband won't watch this so I can say it one of the things I'm working on is not being like a miserable nagging wife okay and it's not because I want to be miserable it's because like I'm just become that person okay and you're probably like, yeah, Ms. Patrick, you've kind of always been that person. I see some seniors being like, yep, that was you. But in my own reflection, I'm also a believer that um, similar to what Hannah did in the story, like in order for you to receive the fruits, right, in order for us to take on this challenge we've been faced with COVID, we have to empty ourselves. We have to accept our position. We have to understand that this is the tongue twister, our challenge that God put in front of us. And we must find a way to work through it. And to me, I was able to go to retreat for principals on Friday when you guys had virtual day. One of the things that I took with is I have to empty myself before I can fill myself with God and before I can fill myself with Christ. So my hope for us right now as students as we navigate this crazy tongue twister of COVID and this pandemic that we might be able to empty ourselves to Christ so we can be filled with his joy and his love. So I challenge you to remind me of my own resolution in my life to not being a nagging wife, um, to being more joyous um, in my work and to help me. And in turn, I hope that it will help us grow and fill ourselves with Christ. So as we navigate Peter Piper pecked a pickle pickle peppers. If Peter Piper pecked a pickle pickle peppers, what's the pack of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked, Mr. Lewis? In that tongue twister, if we need to slow down 
empty ourselves to fill ourselves. Please take this time to do so. God bless. Happy New Year. And we'll see each other at lunch. <laughs>